Bye. Um. Do you feel better now? I do. <laughs> it's a giant steak off marshmallow man over there. Why is that not in, in camera shot? Right? Um, anyway. You didn't see it sooner. I know. It's just, it's just over there. Being awesome. Stepping on churches in my town. Being jolly. Nobody does that. Um, I am Sebastian Pachoni. This is F3G2. This <laughs> is a reasonably organized chaos that we like to call the office. Ooh, the A plus A Archer and Armstrong poster hanging nice. Very nice, very nice. Um, a little bit jewed up there for no reason. Yeah, it's so Some cool stuff in here. You can't see it because we're not moving the camera, so you just have to, I'll just make shit up. Oh my God, is that a sign? Look, that, that's actually Stan Lee mustache shavings in a little Ziploc just hung, hanging on the wall. That's, that's pretty incredible. Um, oh, the actual armor. From the first Iron Man movie, just gathering dust over here. That's that's. There's some crazy shit in here. Look at that, Jimmy Hoffa. Huh. There's all sorts of things. The science spam. We are going to review some comical books, starting with the Amazing Spider Man. <laughs> Best part of this: Cloak and Dagger are normal again, and I don't just mean like they're not negative version evil but cloak is darkness dagger is light they're normal again yay um about time i really enjoy the current amazing spider-man stuff i just do just do thank you dance a lot for being um incredible um it gets a little semi-political he has to fight his own girlfriend who's just trying to protect his mom and trying to protect her mom, and if there's anything Peter Parker can relate to, it's doing dumb shit for the sake of protecting your family. Because with great power comes great poor choice ability. And Peter has those in spades. Um, Pretty much so. It's just good. It's just, just read the new damn Spider-Man book. I mean, come on, people. Huck takes a turn for the dark. Oh, no. Oh no, bad people to take this up. But it's, you know, it's Mark Millar, it was bound to be. But even, not Mark Millar dark, just normal comic dark. He's still writing more niceties than you expect from Mark Millar. Um, he had the secret origin of Huck's mom, and then the actual origin of Huck's mom, sort of. Um, because people are taking advantage of the world's nicest superhero guy. Uh... He takes the whole humble farm boy thing and shows Superman that, you know, you only thought you were a Boy Scout. No. Martian Manhunter number nine is so good. This whole series, um, there's like a million names over here. Uh, but let's, let's find the, the writers here. All right, so it's Rob Williams is the writer. The art is everybody. It's Eddie Barrows, uh... Ronan Cliquet, 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 I don't, I don't know, uh, R.B. Silva, and then the anchors are uh, Iber Ferreira, Mark Deering, and Andy Owens, um, J. Beltabe on uh, colors, and Tom Napolitano on letters, all right, the book is beautiful, it's so It's like, it's worthy of old school vertigo, um, and it's just oddball factor, uh, and then it's, it's heady, it's awesome, it's great. It's some of the best stuff they've done with Martian Manhunter, who ever since they started tweaking with him, ever since, ever since back in the day in the Bwahaha League, when, uh, Giffen and Dimitris decided that the Martian Manhunter form we've seen wasn't his true form, and gave him, um, the naked Gumby look. Uh, things have taken a, you know, people have not been 100% sure and what to do with him. And then, you know, then they killed him and they brought him back and then they knew 52 would him and it was weird. But this, it's finally something new and good and still, you know, it, it still hints at familiar. You're not like, why are they changing? No, it's good. And Mr. Biscuits is my favorite thing. 
Robin, son of Batman. Damien goes home. This is before the new issue, so Bruce is still bearded and has no idea who he is. Damien, you know, kind of watches over him while he sleeps and then decides he's going to live up to the legacy. But Damien has his own bonds, and it's really good. You get, um, uh, nobody has, she's left and has gone on, and, you know, there's actual emotions and actual, a lot of character growth for young Damien as, uh, you know, Goliath returns to him and he realizes that some bonds, you know, you can't, he tried to leave Goliath somewhere to be happy and safe, but Goliath basically wouldn't be happy and safe without Damien. And at the same time, juxtaposed to that, you have that uh, um, nobody has gone off and is happy and safe, but, and, you know, and Damien misses her, but he, you know, he even says, Goliath is like, you know, mm, and he's like, I know, buddy, but she's, you know, at least she's happy, at least she's safe, and, you know, there, you know, there's, there's growth and maturity there and accepting that, you know, you can't leave Goliath, Goliath chose to be with you, you know, if you love something, set it free, um, and at the same time that, you know, while he likes nobody and would rather have her with him as, like, you know, their little team up, she's happy now, she's let go of her, you know, well, the hate, the anger, she's out of, you know, she's not a super assassin, she's not a superhero, she's not a super villain. She's, you know, living a real life. Um, so, <clears throat> it's, it's the good stuff. Speaking of the good stuff, Power Man and Iron Fist, number one. Mm. Um, this book's brilliant. This is, you know, family man, team leader, responsible guy. Power Man, don't call me Power Man, call me Luke Cage. Um, and Iron Fist, who's still Danny Rand, uh, teaming up and constant conversations with um, with with Jewel. Um, you know, good old Jessica Jones is back there, and the constant ask, the constant question of, are you? And Danny back together, and he's like, no, 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 this is a one-time thing, we're working on something. But they get kind of played, and it, it's clearly, they're not done. They're going to be, even though he keeps, you know, just when I think I'm out, they pull him back. Plus, there's a lot of fun with um, Luke Cage's replacement swear words, and Danny Rand keeps saying, you know, Iron Fist is like, why do you keep saying these things? Like, you know, fiddle-faddle, and calling somebody, and he's a bad knick-knack paddywhack, and... <coughs> It just cuts to a black and white flashback panel of the baby holding up one of her toys and just repeating a whole series of the typical comic book font curse symbols and Jessica's leaning on Luke on the couch going, Luke, I love you, sweetie, but you've got to do something about all the swearing. <laughs> so now Luke Cage, he does say Sweet Christmas at one point in here, um, not in the same context that he says it in, you know, Jessica Jones, the TV series. Um, but it's it's great. Tombstone's in it. I think one of my favorite things they they didn't. Tombstone t speaks in a whisper, and they used to use a tiny little font, and they usually use a, a more faded font. It's faded, but not so noticeably faded that at first I had to look to make sure it was. But there is a great line in which Luke Cage tells him, "You know I can't hear you. You know I can't hear you when you do that weird whisper shout thing." <laughs> and He's going on and yelling, and they're just, it's just Luke and Danny. Can you hear? I can't tell what he's saying. <laughs> and there's some great stuff there. RG, Reggie is a douche. We knew that, but he's even a douche in uh, in this CW kind of way that this new Archie is. I'm loving this. I'm going to watch the show when it comes on. I hope it's similar to this. Um, the Riverdale show. Uh, Fall of Sinestro. Change in status quo. We've seen it in the uh, solicits. Sinestro doesn't fall so so much fatally as uh, he takes a, a, a lick and keeps on ticking but steps down. Um, his daughter is going to lead the Sinestro Corps, which I guess makes sense because, you know, I suppose I, uh, you know, Sinestro is, is her last name. You know, she's... he's. She's her. She's she's his daughter. I guess she must be Sornik Sinestro, since he's foul Sinestro. Um, there's a great moment of a small child 
hugging the leg of a very confused looking Arculo, saying, <laughs> Thank you, Monster Man. Thank you, Yellow Lantern. Um, because he, uh, you know, he helped save Earth. And great, uh, you know, it's Cullen Bond, so it is great inner thoughts of Sinestro is, you know, he, he, he's like, you know, people often think I'm without fear. And I let them think that, but that's not how you master fear. You master fear, you embrace fear, you live in fear. He goes, and I'm, I'm scared right now, and that's why, you know, and it's that po he literally is powered by fear. He doesn't just master it and control it. You know, he says, like, that's a mistake that the lanterns make. You know, they master will. But he actually, you know, he's, it's okay to be scared, and you take that, and that powers you. Starbrand and Night Mask. Eternity and Eternity's children really want to end the world. Night Mask really doesn't want to let that happen and doesn't want Starbrand to keep being so callous with the way he handles supervillains. Starbrand doesn't give two craps about, second, even give a second thought about the supervillains, but is impressed because he's discovering he accidentally has game with the ladies in college. Um, or at least he had game. We, we, we have to. I'm assuming that the next issue isn't going to be called End Night Mask, so um, what looks like potential fatality will probably not be the blacklist this book number number seven is from Titan this book continues to be great it looks and reads exactly like the show um, they look exactly like they're supposed to and you hear their voices when they speak it's it's some you know it's just extremely well done in, in all fashions um, right now it's a little behind. They're still fugitives on the run, which they've resolved in the show, but, you know, so this is still some behind the scenes. Uh, the shield and the dark circle. I like the idea of the dark circle stuff, um, and most of it's good. I, this is only issue two, so I'm, I'm hoping to hold on a little stronger. Uh, because cause I really want these to be some of my favorite things. Web Warriors. They're in a steampunk world, and they can build the device they need to communicate and try and get themselves out, but it needs electricity to really work it. They don't have any electricity in a steampunk world. Um, on the plus side, they're fighting a whole bunch of electros, and guess what electros make? Uh, Gwen and... Um, the Uncle Ben Spider-Man team up to try and free the multiple Doc Ox that are working, that are being forced to work for the Electros, but multiple Doc Ox are still multiple Doc Ox and just want to kill the spiders. Except for one, Octavia Otto, who, from her world, and says, oh, you guys must be good, ver I decided to help you because I figure you guys must be good versions of Spider-Woman. And they're like, what? She's like, yeah, in my world, uh, Parker Peters is the worst killer ever, <laughs> and they weren't ready for a world where the spider is the bad guy. So that 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 threw, this is good. It's fun, and I love uh, what's what's Baldion's first name? David David Baldion's art. I've always loved. So I'm humble. Black Hood number nine. This is chapter nine. So yeah, Black Hood number nine. Um, Kind of grittier street level Black Hood. It's been good. I like the art. Um, I like the stories. I like his kind of. He's kind of reluctant to be the Black Hood, but he's also reluctant to give it up. So he's he's neither fully committed, um, nor fully opposed to what he does. And uh, it's similar. It's in a similar vein to the revamped X over at uh, Dark Horse. American Monster is a Brian Azzarello crime story. This is number two. It's everything you'd expect and want from Brian Azzarello. You've got, you know, <laughs> small town weirdness. You've got neo-Nazi assholes who are un nonplussed by anything until they find out someone shot, or as he puts it when he tells his daughter, Snow. He tells his daughter, Snow, baby, our dog got murdered. And then they hold each other and cry, and he's, you know, a crying 
giant man walking around with, you know, SS tattoos on his back because, and then even the cop is just like, just, yeah, he's like, I don't know <laughs> what to do. Um, you're neo-Nazi, so I can only sympathize with you so far, but your dog died as well. Um, they don't go murder a man's dog. Secret Six, number 11. It's Secret Six. It's it's Simone and Eaglesham. It's beautiful. Bad Girl shows up. Um, so Simone gets to write. Gail Simone gets to do her take on the new version of Bad Girl, who, while it is the same character, I think we can all agree that in the um, the Babs Tar series. Uh, the change, the changes to the character have been more than a costume and more than cosmetic. They've changed the persona, the persona. They've changed the look. They've changed the feel. It, it appears they've changed the age and the motivations. You know, she's completely, she's the same person, but a completely different character. Um, and Gail Simone is Gail Simone, which means she goes, yeah, I, I know who that girl is, no matter what you do to her. And I don't have to revent, you know, when I take her to play with her in my sandbox, I don't have to turn her, in, you know, right back into the Batgirl I was writing in a different costume. I can write the Batgirl that still fits in that world and use her in this one. And it's, it's just, it's Secret Sex. Just read Secret Sex. Hell's wrong with you people. Um, Extraordinary X-Men. What happened to Nightcrawler? We find out. The good news is, unless it's just a flub of the art, I guess somebody reattached his tail, because... It looks like he's got it, you know, it's, it's coming off there. So I guess that was nice. Um, still not sure about the armor, and I'm still not sure about the fact that they're coloring in. He's covered in blue fur. His hair was always blue fur. At this point, they've got him with black hair, and he's somehow growing, like, black facial hair, like it's just growing out of blue skin. He's furry. I don't think they grasped that when you know they made these changes that that wouldn't work. You can't just grow a black hair goatee and long black hair over your blue furry body. You're blue furry. Maybe you could grow the fur out a little thicker. I don't know how that works and have a blue goatee, but you wouldn't just grow black facial. It's not like he just has blue skin. Makes me nuts. Snowfall on cedars. No cedars. Um, Snowfall by Joe Harris and Martin Morazzo, number one. Um, Climate change screws up the world. Mankind's attempt to fix it by trying to de build devices to um, regulate the weather fucks it up more. Oh, um, American flag flies upside down. Um, there was a guy called the, who called himself the White Wizard, or they called him the White Wizard, who had a way of making it snow, even though it hasn't snowed in, like, decades on Earth. Um, but he had a way of doing it. A college student kind of goes back to... It's <coughs> sort of... Um, like a sci-fi, weather-oriented story with just a dash of, you know... Dash of that kind of V for Vendetta feel with the guy coming out of retirement of like a Dark Knight Returns kind of vibe. Um, but without really being... I'm just trying to find an analogy to, to, to give you a sense of what's happening. It doesn't really feel like either of those. It's not like, oh, this is like, you know, you know if you're coming in expecting, like expecting, expecting Dark Knight Returns with snow, it's not that. Um... It's 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 good. It's worthy of like um, it's on like a a, a vertigo level um, wildstorm level when wildstorm was doing stuff like the authority and uh, it sounds heady in and, a good way. And what's the head drums and Elijah Snow and Jacosta uh, Jaca uh, the hell is that uh, planetary. Ah. Um, Titans Hunt. They can't explain. The best part of this is, well, 
gonna get stuck with. I'm gonna hit hit a brick wall called an issue written by Lobdell, but then the last issue won't be again. So I, I don't know why that's happening, why Lobdell has to write one issue of the Titans miniseries, but w whatever. Um, just to fuck with you. Probably. He just, it says Titans. He has to come break it. Um, they have flashbacks to them in costumes similar to their real-world ones. Because, um, yeah, I don't count the New 52 as the real world. Suck it. Um, but there are moments when, for no reason that they can explain, they start referring to themselves as, like, Robin, Aqualad, and Wonder Girl, even though that's clearly not the names they go by now. So, uh, Star Wars... The Star Wars books continue to look great. They continue to be great. Um, Which one is that? The in between? This is the in between. It's Star Wars, but there's a lot of focus all of a sudden on this Doctor Afra, and um, I really find her and those sadist and the sadistic three PO and R two knockoffs. I would rather have the the green bunny guy back than than read too much of them. I just don't like those characters, and they just it takes me out of the. Oh, I'm immersed back in the Star Wars. Oh, you guys. You you fanfic characters just keep showing the fuck up, don't you? There's the door. There you go. But it's almost like having a gun gun. No. But I take. Yeah, I take a Gungan and maybe not Jar Jar, but I take a Gungan and the Green Bunny over their continued plot. Damn. Standoff <laughs> was very interesting. Um, I'll admit it was not what I expected, and they totally faked me out. Well played. Um, I fell for it completely. I thought the two characters were going to turn out to be the two characters they clearly wanted me to think it was. So when I got to that last splash and saw who they really were, it worked. I was like, well, damn, okay. That's kind of, okay. And that explains a lot of questions I had about a series that they're saying is coming up soon. But, okay, I don't want to spoil too much. But um, Pleasant Hill is um, Mariah Hill and S.H.I.E.L.D.'s ultimate supervillain prison in so much as it's just a town where they... Um, are, you know, it's inhabited by uh, undercover shield agents and supervillains who have uh, they've been ultimate brainwashed. They don't know they they don't know who they are. They get new identities. They think they live in Pleasant Hill, and they all see themselves as other people. When they look in the mirror, they don't see who they really are. Um, Bucky stumbles across this in the beginning and is taken down by a shield. And then suddenly, boom, we're thrust into um, a guy waking up in Pleasant Hill and not knowing who he is. And uh, trying to escape for a while until he starts to come to terms with it. Um, so this is going to be an interesting... Uh, it's going to be a different kind of crossover than the ones we usually get from Marvel. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm deeply intrigued. I'm, I'm in. So this is pretty good. And... Uh, Eyeball Smaug says, I'm out of, uh, I'm out of books to review. Don't you, limited chase edition, eyeball having Smaug. I am fire. No, you're, you're a toy. But you, no, I am fire. That's how the kids today say something's really cool. True, true. You, you are fire, son. You are fire. Uh, goodbye, interwebs. Thanks for watching another video from Gunna Geek. If you like geeky stuff, check out our podcast network, our news and articles, and our community forums. You can find it all at gunnageek.com, like us at facebook.com slash gunnageek, tweet us at gunnageek, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gunnageek, and check out our live programming at gunnageek.com slash live.